Well, Stephanie, the FDA is considering reversing a decades-old ban that kept gay and bisexual men from donating blood. But as Morgan Radford reports, there's one very controversial condition. In a statement released Tuesday, the FDA says that it carefully examined and considered the available scientific evidence and now recommends a change to the blood donor deferral period for men who have sex with men from indefinite deferral to one year since the last sexual contact. In other words, it presents gay or bisexual men with a choice, either be celibate for a year or don't donate blood, a choice that many gay rights activists say is simply unfair. I think that's ridiculous. I interviewed Damon Jacobs, an openly gay marriage and family therapist, and Dr. Devi Nampian Parampil, a physician and researcher, in early December when a panel of experts met to consider changing the ban. Why would I be forced to wait a year to not have sex in order to give blood when the heterosexual man can have sex with 100 women without a condom, and as long as he's not paying any of them, and as long as he doesn't think that they're HIV positive, right. he could walk in and give blood, and they'd be happy to take his blood. I think it makes sense to look at people's actual behavior in terms of, you know, has someone had sex with, a, a, you know, paid money, a prostitute, or other things that actually put them more at risk. But the FDA is standing by its decision. It first implemented the restrictions back in 1983 during the early days of the AIDS crisis, when the FDA decided that no man could donate blood who had had sex with another man since 1977, even if it happened only once. But now, many of the doctors who say the FDA hasn't fully taken the country's current medical advances into account still believe the change is a step in the right direction. The year long also might be too long if you think about it in terms of uh, the data, in terms of what your risk is. But regardless, a year long ban is still better than a lifetime ban. According to the Williams Institute on Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity Law at UCLA, eliminating the ban altogether would mean adding over 600,000 pints to the annual blood supply. Whereas as this one-year ban would only add 300,000 pints. Well, coming up later this hour, we'll explore the FDA's decision with Dr. Devi Napia Parampil from New York University's School of Medicine. Uh, the FDA moves closer to lifting a ban on gay men giving blood donations. But some say the move by health officials doesn't go far enough. Up next, we'll speak with Dr. Devi Nampia Parampil about the decision and what it means for blood donations going forward. Well, the FDA is taking steps towards lifting a lifetime ban on accepting blood, do blood from gay donors. Now, the rule was put into effect in 1983, early in the AIDS epidemic. Under the new plan, gay and bisexual men could give blood, but only if they haven't had sex with another man within the last 12 months. Dr. Devi Nampia Parampil is the, an associate professor at the New York University School of Medicine. She's joining us from Atlanta this morning. Doctor, how reasonable is this one year celibacy recommendation? You know, we had a person in a piece earlier say that uh, hetero men can be very promiscuous and uh, they still are allowed to donate. That's true. So there are a couple of things to consider. I mean, the first thing is, you know, are these reg regulations and restrictions being applied consistently? And second, do they make sense? So in terms of applying them consistently, I mean, there's some, there's some uh, truth to that in that, you know, a person could have unprotected sex with a bunch of people and then still go donate blood uh, if they're heterosexual. But at the same time, if a woman has sex with a man who's had sex with a man ever in his lifetime, then that woman only has to wait one year. So there was some inconsistency. There was definitely some discriminatory uh, elements to the previous rule. But now if you look at this, uh, even if you wait a year after having sex, let's say with somebody who's used steroids or other drugs that are not prescribed, you know, that also had a ban. So in some sense, they are at least a little bit consistent. Now the other thing is, does it make sense? Is it appropriate to wait a year? So I think, you know, a year might be too long. It's still better than a lifetime. But with the testing that we have today, you can actually have an answer about HIV and some of these other other bloodborne diseases within a few weeks. You don't have to wait a year to actually know. Well, doctor, with all the medical advances since AIDS was discovered, is the risk of HIV transmission in blood really higher among gay and bisexual men? It is a little bit higher, but the thing to keep in mind is that the questionnaire doesn't really ask you if you're having protected sex or unprotected sex, and that's a huge factor in terms of figuring out your risk for HIV. So that's one issue. 
I mean, the other thing that we have to weigh this against, too, is how much do we actually need that blood? How many lives could be saved? Now, the American Red Cross has actually been pushing for the lifting of the ban for some time because they face this constant shortage of blood. I mean, a lot of people go and donate blood, but there are a couple reasons why there's a shortage. So first of all, you know, blood has an expiration date, just like milk or juice or other things. It can only stay, you know, in good, in good condition for a few days after it's been taken out of the body. It's a very limited time span. So once that happens, you know, they have to use the blood or they have to throw it away. So they always need donors available. Now, the other thing is that we have different blood types. So a person with type A blood cannot donate blood to someone who's type B. So then the issue becomes, you know, do you have enough donors from these different groups? And then finally, you know, are you getting enough donors in all these different geographic areas? So if you think about all the people who have car accidents or other accidents, people who have surgeries, people who have other diseases where they might need blood, you really need to cover all of these folks. And one donor, whether they're gay or straight, one donor can donate blood almost every two months if they wanted to, if they were in healthy and good condition. So the thing is, you're actually losing that much blood mm -hmm. that could save so many lives by having having a ban. Even if it's a year, it still, you know, it still limits the amount of blood that person could donate. Thank you so much for weighing in. Dr. Devi Napia Perimpil, New York University.